Hey everyone, welcome back to another amazing tutorial. Today we'll be designing these cool new morphic animations in Figma. And Figma is available on the web, so you really don't have to download anything in this case. So without further ado, let's just get started with this awesome tutorial. Also, go ahead in the comments, write hashtag we love Figma and also maybe tell me which one you like the best out of these. I also have an Instagram profile now so you can follow me there. I post amazing design content on a daily basis on my Instagram and I also go live and design with you guys. So that'll be awesome. So to start off, I have this very basic sketch that I drew out for reference, of course. And to start off, what we'll do is just create a basic artboard. Just drag out and create a square artboard just like that. It could be big, small, any size will do. And we will design each animation one by one. So the first animation will be the switch, the, the rounded rectangle switch. And I want you guys to make a rectangle. Should look something like this, if not identical. And on the right, there is this corner radius option. I want you to change it from zero to 500. I know 500 is a high value, but the thing is it completely rounds uh, all the borders here in this case. The next thing is very simple. We're basically going to change the color of this frame a little bit, which is basically the background color. And inside the fill, we'll click on this. And from solid, we'll take it to linear. And here in this case, at the bottom, I want to make sure that it's 100% opacity on both the ends just like that, just by selecting these squares here. And at the bottom, I want this slightly grayed out portion. And at the top, white is fine. Now what I'm going to do is I am going to select this rectangle here, click on the color value here and click on this little color picker. I'll click on it. And the next thing is I will pick the color from right about here, right next to the rectangle. So we basically have something like this. You can see it. Now what we'll do is select the rectangle, go to effects right here and just click on it. And as you can see, it's applied a drop shadow. We want to change the drop shadow by clicking on this to an inner shadow. Now in this case, what we want to do is click on this little cute sun icon. And for the blur value, I want something like 24. For the X, I want something like 12 and Y as well should be somewhat 12. So see how it's adding depth. I might reduce the opacity of the shadow from 25 to about 15. Looking really good. Now we will click on the rectangle again and right next to effects, there's a plus icon. I want you to click on that plus icon. This will add another inner shadow. So just change it to inner shadow. So now you have two inner shadows. On the top, click on this sun icon and change the values to minus in this case. So minus 12, minus 12 on the X, minus 12 on the Y. So now it will basically appear from the bottom here and blur should be about 12 in this case. And I'll tell you why. We will change the color to white and this will be a light effect and maybe increase the opacity to about 90%. Now, as you can see, we have this really clean looking new morphic button or this new morphic container in this case. Now what we do is we create another rectangle right here, which is about this tall and make sure that it is about 24 pixels from each edge. So in this case, uh, it should be 24 from here. I'll adjust it, maybe place it in the center and also 24 from the top, just like this and 24 from the bottom. You might have to adjust it until you get all these values. Now what we'll do is we'll also give this border radius or corner radius of 500, looking good. And now what we'll do is we want to give this three dimensional depth. So it looks like a real life button. So basically I have copied this three dimensional circle uh, and uh, I'll basically be giving a Figma file in the description so you can copy it. Since this is a frame, what it allows me to do is say command option C or control alt C, just do that and click on this rectangle here and say command option V or control alt V. And what will happen is basically it will copy the style of this, which is three dimensional to a little button here. So as you can see, we now have this 3D looking button. You can do this, this is a quick trick. And what we will do is basically click on this plus icon right next to fill. 
and basically I'm going to change from linear to solid and change the color. In this case, we will go for this slightly um, a deep pink, almost a red, so as to say, and reduce the op opacity of this color here from 100 to about 50. You can maybe increase it to about 80 and that should do the job. And one more thing to improve this, go to this little drop at the top of this widget. Under this, you go to color and click on color. And as you can see, this is basically applied that. I can now change it to 100 if I wanted to. So 100%. And as you can see, this is a bright, uh, almost um, deep pink, almost red color here. And what I'm gonna do is, for the shadows around here, I'm gonna create a circle. Oops, that's a rectangle. I'm gonna create a circle by clicking on O and then just dragging out. And what I'm gonna do is give it the same uh, reddish pink or whatever it is. And under effect, I'll click on effect again. Under drop shadow, there's an option called layer blur. I wanna change this from four to 42. You know what, 42 is too little, maybe 100, still too little, like 500. Oh, that, that is better. What I'll do is reduce the opacity uh, of this element by a lot, maybe make it 15%. Uh, and you know what, you can make this circle much smaller if you want, so that it only goes in a certain direction and increase the opacity of this again. So that'll be, that'll be much better. Yeah, for sure, for sure this is better. Uh, now the moving will be very simple. I'll just duplicate this frame by clicking on the frame and selecting Command D or Control D and dragging out the circle as well as this rectangle over to the next segment. It's as simple. Uh, that is how we use a Smart Animate. And I'll just click on this rectangle. On the top right, you'll have this option called Prototype. Click on Prototype, change and drag this little circle right next to the rectangle to the second box or the second frame. Under this, I want you to change the settings a little bit. Navigate to perfect, frame seven perfect. Under animation, change it from instant to smart animate. Ease in out is what I was choosing and you know, 500 milliseconds should do it. Maybe slightly longer, 600 milliseconds seems better. And we can try this out by clicking on this present button right here. It opens a new window if you're on the browser. Otherwise it will open there itself if you have the application on your device. And it might take a second to load. Once it does, just click on this. And as you can see, it just floats. You can make it come back if you just go to this rectangle in the second box here and drag the circle from here to this point. And that's about it. The second design is actually super simple. I've just copied this again. And in this case, what I'm gonna do is click on this rectangle and press enter after clicking on this rectangle. And as you can see, now we have these anchor points on the edges and in the middle as well. So I'll just click on this anchor point and drag it down. And basically just drag this anchor point down just like this. And same for the bottom anchor point, hold it and press shift to shift it down evenly and maybe shift it down like this. And as you can see, we already have like a really good curve here. You can increase or decrease the width or increase the height to basically, basically make it look like a smile. And you can basically do that by holding shift, selecting both the anchor points and just saying shift and bottom arrow. What that will do is just move it down a little bit, just like this. This looks really good. It looks like a legit smile now. Select the rectangle here and reduce the width to about the same width as the height is. So 112, I'll change it to 105 and now it's almost a perfect circle. I will then shift this circle here and maybe change the overlay value a little bit. So here in fill, we'll change it to like a deep green. Ah, looking nice. See the effect that I gave, it's still intact and it is basically an image, nothing else. Here I'll change the shade of the circle to the same green here. From here, reduce the opacity much, much more because this green is really harsh. And one more thing now we have to do is click on this rectangle, hold option or alt to just drag it out or you can just copy and paste it like this. And I want to place another circle which is just a basic circle. Click on O and create the circle. 
and I want to use the same color like this, perfect. What I'm gonna do is make sure that the circle is on top of this uh, little smiley and select both the circle and this smiley by holding shift, right click and say use as mask. As you can see, it's now masked around it. And what I'll do is just for reference, I'll place it above this smile and make sure it's placed below this little three dimensional circle. Once it's done, click on this ellipse under mask group. You can select it from the assets panel on the left. Make sure that it's away from this smile so it basically doesn't cause any distraction. Now what I'm gonna do is create one last circle just like this and I will make sure that it is about towards the center and it curves also similarly with the smile. So it follows the smile as it curves. What I'm gonna do is reduce the opacity of this big circle to 0% from the right here. Select both the big circle as well as this little 3D circle here and group it. I'll do that by saying Command G or Control G to group it. Perfect. Now it's done. What uh, We can test it out if we just click on this rectangle and then uh, from the edge just shift like this just use your mouse to shift it shift it like this and it's almost perfect It's not a hundred percent perfect You can get it right if you change the size of the circle But for now what we am going to do is once it comes to the end We'll just shift it like this, you know, so it's tested out. It's working. Well I'll basically click on frame it and then say command D or control D and I'll just hold shift and rotate this rectangle like this now I'll make some edits to the circle. I will basically double click to select the inner circle. Make sure that it's in the center of this smile here. Just make some tiny adjustments. And what I'm gonna do is rotate it so that it's now 100% straight just like before. That's it. Now if I click on this little circle here or I double click, I'll go to prototype mode here on the top right. And I will make sure that this arrow is basically pointing towards the second artboard right here. That's perfect. And once again, I'll do it again with this circle right here on the second artboard and it will basically jump back and forth. Now to animate this, as you can see, the earlier frames are here and there's a play button right here. I just want you to drag this play button and shift it to frame eight. Now this animation will play and start from here. So I'll click on this play button again and it opens a new tab as usual. Now this has opened up. I will click on this circle and see how it basically smoothly moves down. Yes, I know the circle is a little jinxed here because of course we're, we don't have a, like a perfect smiley outlining circle, but once you do, it will basically move in a perfect circle like this and it looks really good. One more thing we can do here is of course, uh, remember the circle we hid behind this smiley what we'll do is basically click on this mask on top, mask group, click on this ellipse and increase the size of this ellipse. So it basically fills up this area and reduce the opacity of this fill from 100 to about 50 or maybe less than that, 25 will be even better. Awesome, so that you still retain the depth in this. And I'll, pray, and I'll go ahead and play this again, once again. Now, if I click on this circle, ooh, see how this green basically follows your path like this. That looks really cool. Okay, the third design is actually really, really simple. Basically make an empty artboard here, create a circle just like this, and um, put this right here in the center. Now what I'm gonna do is create a simple gradient by clicking on linear here and selecting each point here and making it this red that I've already saved here. So as you can see, there's this red, one red here, and the other end should be slightly darker in color for sure. And that dark color is about this. Looking good. Now what, we, now what we're gonna do is basically rotate it so that this red, the bright red is in one direction here and the dark red is in one direction here. In this case, we can, in Figma, we can add multiple fills. So we'll be doing that here itself. Click another fill here and click on this linear and change the values here from, keep both of these values white. Make sure that the opacity of each white is really low. So you get that, okay, light is moving from the left to the bottom here 
and it, it it kind of gives that whole appeal you can also make that look even better if you just drag the second uh, circle here close to the first circle so it legit just looks like the circle is getting light from this side and for the shadows click on effect again and here under drop shadow just click on the sun and here give these certain values y should be 12 x should be 12 as well and blur should be 24 and as you can see this dark shadow has been given here if I click on this circle again and add another effect by clicking on the plus sign, we get another drop shadow. I want to basically make this minus values, so minus 12, minus 12, and blur should be 8. I'll tell you why soon, again, because it's now white, and I want it to be 100%, so, it, so we can basically see it on this slightly grayed out background. As you can see, we have this... Uh, shiny portion or this white portion here and this really dark dimmed out portion here it looks like a really cool button and now as you can see I've placed a basic icon which I've made here I'll give all these links in the description I'll change the film from a red to like a light red like this and what I'm gonna do is since it's already like a light red I'll go ahead and add another effect here to this icon and icons can take the same effects as any other component in Figma so in this case, I'll make the blur 8 for the inner shadow. Y should be 8 as well, I guess. Yes, and X should be 8 as well. As you can see, we already have this depth. Maybe increase the blur to about a 12. Yes, and reduce the opacity to 15. Looking good. And maybe I will increase the value of this red. Maybe make it less opaque. As you can see, it already looks so three-dimensional. I absolutely love it. Now we will click on frame 10. Say command D to duplicate it. What I'm gonna do in this case is click on, first of all, this play icon, and I will basically make it fade away a little bit. So reduce the opacity to about 45%, looking good already, and reduce the effect of the shadow to maybe like a two and another two, and blur should be two as well. So barely visible. And for the circle, what I'm gonna do is change the drop shadow inner shadows in both cases. And as you can see, it's already giving like a pressed in depth. But what I'm gonna do is remove the inner shadow, white inner shadow, yeah, this is the white inner shadow, and click on this eye icon to basically hide it. Awesome. Increase the dark inner shadow to from blur, it should be about 80, I guess, yeah, much better. Uh, y and X value should be 24 and 24, because it's now like giving more inner depth and that is it what it should be increase the opacity to 45 and as you can see now it seems as if it's been really pressed so what i'm going to do is click on this circle in the first artboard click on protopie as usual drag this little circle to the second artboard and do the same with the second artboard as well and you know what to do now click on this little play icon on the previous artboards and drag it here to frame 10 so it can seamlessly move between frame 10 and frame 11. So click on frame 10, click on this play icon right here, which is basically present, and it should open up. As you can see, once this opens up, if I click on this little icon here, ooh, oh, this is so smooth, guys. This looks so, so good. You know, this is my favorite out of these. Tell me in the comments, which one is your favorite out of these? Thank you guys for watching. I will see you every Monday and Thursday. Go ahead and subscribe to my channel and also hit that bell icon so that you get notified about my videos and I will see you next time. God bless.